Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we're going to take a sneak peek at Hytale's user interface. A user interface, or UI for short, could easily make or break your game. And with Hytale, we've not seen much of their user interface. But that's because Hypixel made a conscious decision to only showcase so much of it during the announcement trailer. They released this post on their blog. We've been working on Hytale for several years, and today we finally revealed the whole scope of the project. While we made a choice not to show too much of Hytale's interface in the trailer, we want to take this opportunity to show what we've been working on behind the scenes. In my announcement breakdown trailer, I mentioned the lag of UI showcased, but this post puts that to rest for me. They continue to add, sometimes you don't get a real sense of how a game plays until you see how you interact with it, so we hope the following screenshots and concepts give you a deeper sense of what Hytale's adventure mode is like. Obviously, these screenshots and concepts reflect an in-development version of the game, things are likely to change by the time you get to play it. So there's a good chance that a lot of this UI won't make it into the final game. But that's always the case with things in development. So with that in mind, let's jump straight in. So towards the top of the screen, we have a menu bar with multiple options. First, we have Adventure Mode. It's said to be somewhat RPG-like. We'll have single player and multiplayer combat with distinctive biomes and a procedurally generated world. We'll also have dungeon exploration, dynamic boss encounters, and a lot more. Next, we have minigames. We have at least six confirmed minigames in Hytale. We have Sky Wars, Bed Wars, Build Battle, The Walls, Paintball Warfare, and Blitz Survival. There are also two unknown minigames yet to be announced. If you've played on Hypixel's Minecraft server, You've probably played one of these minigames before. Moving on to servers, Hytale Server Browser will allow us to quickly find community servers to play on. I'm going to cover the server menu and servers in general in a separate video, as I feel there's a lot to talk about. Up next, my avatar. And from the looks of it, it brings you to the character creation menu, and within it, you can customize everything from clothing to your physical appearance. I'll be coming back to talk about this in a moment. Now we have the settings menu. This is a rough concept of how I think it would look. I don't imagine it needing to be much more complicated than this. It would only need some basic functions like video, sound, controls, gameplay, and exit. I've also designed a few of the pieces of UI content to try and get a better idea of what I think Hytale's UI might look like. So to the right, we have a chat icon. I'd imagine the design being quite straightforward, with your friends' names to the left, and a chat window to the right. This would be mainly used for direct messages. We'll probably have a separate chat feature in-game that would allow us to enter other chat channels, like general chat, friend chat, and group chat. To the right of that, we have a friends icon. This is my take on the design, and again, I see no need for it to be much more complicated than this. You could right-click your profile picture to change your status, you could easily add, remove, or block players. And of course, say who's online, offline, or AFK. Next, we have our username with a drop down menu. This could lead to options like view profile, account management, support, and logout. And lastly, we have our character profile picture. I think this would be pretty cool if this was a live view of our character, so that way it would update every time you change your cosmetic items. And again, if you look closer to your profile picture, it has a little green dot to show you're online. So with that, I'd assume we'd have at least some ability to change our status. So like I said, I'd be coming back to the My Avatar option. I'll be talking mostly about the UI elements rather than the designs themselves. However, I will be making another video in the future all about that stuff. So here we have the character creation window. There's a lot going on. So first, we'll go through the icons to the left of the menu. So we have our first icon which allows us to choose fundamental features like body types and skin tone. The second icon will allow us to change our hairstyle and colour. The dye tab is a feature in all of the cosmetic tabs. Some items have access to more colours than others, as well as dual tones. Next we have eyes, eyebrows, facial hair, 
undertops, which are shirts, t-shirts and dresses, overtops, which are basically just coats, jackets and hoodies, pants, shoes, gloves, head accessories, so that would be things like caps and beanies, but also fun items like bunny ears and horns. Next we have ear accessories, like earrings. However, I do remember seeing elf ears somewhere, so I think that might be an accessory too. Though I've created this final tab as a concept, I think we may have facial expressions, emotes and idle animations. One thing I did notice when watching the announcement trailer is that all of the cosmetics had unique names. So by using the search engine above, you can easily access them. There also seems to be a tag symbol with a drop down menu on the search bar. So not only can you search for your items by name, you could perhaps even favourite them or give them nicknames. Either way it looks like there are multiple ways of searching for items. Just above the search bar, and throughout the character creation menus, I've noticed these lock symbols. I think this will allow us to lock specific sentences so that we don't accidentally change anything when editing our characters. And at the bottom right of the character creation menu, we have two buttons that give us the ability to randomise our character's design. Since these symbols are outside the character creation menu, I can only assume that it will take all of our cosmetic items and randomise them. Perhaps that's where the lock features come into play. As you can see, the UI is very well designed. It's simple and easy to understand, and this is what players need. Next up we have the world map. The world map is here to help players find quests, dungeons, players, and a lot more. To the left we have a very useful legend. It shows us story dungeons, world dungeons, temples, world gates, our spawning area, points of interest, players, friends, and waypoints. I can already see this map design is off to a great start. To the right we have the ability to place markers, remove markers, change our marker settings, and even zoom in and out of our map. On the map we have our spawn location, a point of interest, a world dungeon, two story dungeons, loot, and this other symbol which I've not found anywhere else. In the centre of the map, we have what seems to be a boss icon, which when hovered over brings up a simple quest objective. This again keeps the map's UI very clean. And just south of that, we have our player icon. We also appear to be surrounded by other players. However, the icons are a little different. As you can see, the centre of the icons are green, whereas the friend icon is white. Perhaps the circle inside of the icon changes colour, depending if you're in a party or not. Now, we're under crafting. We'll start off with our character's equipment tab. We have a space for a helmet, gloves, chest and legs, along with four ring slots, which could lead to skills like jewel crafting or enchanting. We also have this blank area in the centre of the rings, which could be anything at this point, but if I had to guess, I would say a necklace or some kind of gem slot. I'm excited to find out. Below that we have our health and health regen, armor level, attack damage, archery damage, and possibly magic damage. I'm not entirely sure about this one, but I believe we have mana and mana regen. It's strange that the mana level is so low, but perhaps your mana is retained, restored, and cast through magic weapons. Let me hear your thoughts on this, as I can't think of any other reason why the mana would be so low. Now, we'll move on to the inventory. It appears we have a total of 45 slots of inventory spaces. Materials seem to stack, which is great, especially when you're on the go. We also have a workbench, and it reads, Use the weapon bench to craft a range of melee and ranged weaponry. Knowledge of new weapon categories and weapons themselves can be found scattered throughout the world. So using the workbench will allow us to access the weapon bench. I'm not sure if that's a typo, or if that's just how crafting works. So here we have the weapon bench interface. This allows us to craft swords, axes, maces, two-handed axes, and bows. Below that we can see some of the weapons we can craft. Crafting in Hytale resembles less of something like Minecraft and more of that of an MMO. I'm happy with a recipe based system like this as I prefer the style of crafting. As you can see, to create an iron sword, we need an iron bar, a wooden stick, and some light leather. So if you have those materials, you could simply select craft, and it will create your item. You also have the option to craft 10 of that item, 
or if you wish to use all of your materials, you have the option to craft all. Next up, we have an armory concept. As players progress further in Hytale, they'll be able to experiment with crafting materials and found components. As you can see, the armory supports melee weapons, bows, and armor, so this will give us a chance to experiment and create some powerful weapons and gear. This crafting system not only allows us to combine materials to discover new recipes, but also shows us all of the other recipes we already know. And finally, we have the tooltip concepts. They're very well designed and fairly easy to read. Let's take a closer look at the demonic axe. We have the name of the weapon, the weapon's damage and DPS, the rarity of the weapon, the weapon's speed, and down here we have the weapon type, and the weapon's durability, and some weapons even have special abilities. So as we can see, there are some classic RPG elements at work here. It's very fitting for the world of Hytale. I think Hytale's UI is off to a great start. It's easy to read and to navigate, and really that's what you want in a UI. User experience is the most important thing when it comes to creating a UI. If Hytale continue with this design and designs like this, I think players will have a positive experience with Hytale's user interface. However, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Tune in next week when we get to know some of Hytale's NPCs.